If you've been watching my channel for a long time, I'm sure you've seen a lot of different tiny houses, yurts, tree houses, house trucks, homemade expedition vehicles, you name it on my channel. But one thing I haven't done yet is a converted school bus or a schoolie. So this weekend when I was at the Tiny House Living Festival, I came across a lot of schoolies and one in particular stood out to me because it was built by a woman. Today I'm going to show you a tour of the school bus called Valerie, built by a girl named Heidi. Take my whole hand. really bad and uh, my mom knew that I may not be in that area that I was in and she was like don't buy a house don't buy a house and I was like well maybe I'll just buy a school bus and she was like yeah buy a school bus and I was like what mom really <laughs> so originally this was a school bus that was in a district a school district and it was to transport kids and usually when you get a schoolie they always come yellow and they say school bus on it in certain states you have to cover up the word school bus because it's not in use anymore. Some states even require you to paint them. Depends on the state that you live in. You have to tear out all the seats. It's a blank canvas, basically. This is kind of the layout I finally decided on. I did it probably three times, ripped it out, did it again. Functionality in such a tiny space is really, really important. So multi-use everything. Everything is has dual purpose. Uh, yeah, everything has to do two jobs. And so this is the kitchen. I have a stove and a sink. This is an old bucket I found, turned it into a sink. There's the foot pump for the water. Really easy, you don't need electricity. We have a garbage can, tons of storage, tons of storage up, up here. This is all the food storage. This stuff kind of rattles when you drive. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta work on stuffing things in there and making that a little bit um, better. This pulls up, this makes more counter space. So everybody talks about, oh, you don't have any counter space, no counter space to work. And so you got your stove here and your sink and then you put your cutting board and you do your chopping and then you're, you're cooking. And then, and then when it's, you know, you're not using it anymore, it folds up, it goes down so that um, you, you can still walk through here. And then the refrigerator's over there. Ran out of room in the, in the, ki in the kitchen for the refrigerator. So I ended up putting it as the other seat over here in the dining room. And so, you know, some things you just can't, you can't have everything. But it's not too far away, so what is... No, it's not <laughs> So this is a 1991 Chevy G30 van. So it's a van chassis that they put the bus on the back part. I don't know what the height is, but I'm 5'6", so that's pretty close. Um, it's 20 foot feet long, the whole thing. Um, I think it's about 80 square feet of living space. I only know that because I bought 100 square feet of flooring and I had some extra. <laughs> this is the closet and the toilet pulls out from underneath because it's just so tiny that I wanted the, the toilet to just pull out. I hang up curtains so that you can use the bathroom with some privacy and then it just shoves back under. And this is a composting this toilet. This is a composting. This is the nature's head composting. Um, and I really, really like it. It was expensive, but it was worth every penny. Definitely one of the best purchases of the whole build. I'm going to put in a shower. I haven't done it yet, but it will be in the stairwell. Since the sink is right by the stairs, I'm just gonna have the hot water go up to a shower unit. I'll have a curtain that pulls around and you'll just shower in the stairs and then it will just drain out the bottom and then it, and you open it back up and it turns back into stairs. This is my living room. One step away. <laughs> this is also the bed. So it pulls out, it's just um, a slat system that you just really easy pulls out. There's little felt things on the bottom of the two by four, so they just slide on the floor. It's a full size. You could probably go queen if you wanted to, but we found that full size is just plenty and it works great. But it does have a Tempur-Pedic topper. <laughs> I'm the princess in the pea. <laughs> it was really, really important to me to not do the dining room and the bed in the same combo. I did live in a tiny home before this and it had, the dining room was the bed and every time you wanted to take a nap or use the dining room, it was like you had to do this whole production to make it work. And so that was a lot of the reason why I ended up with this layout is because I didn't want that. So I wanted it to be functional 
both at the same time and then still be able to be a bed. And I like this kind of hangout space like this because um, vibe wise when people come over and we do like you know dinners and hang out this folds up and you can get like eight people around this table because you know you can sit people all along here and then I've got these little folding stools that sit up and so you can sit all these people so you can play cards and it's a really great like hangout space and that was pretty important to me when I was doing the design and so that's where I landed with all of this layout. So this is the wood stove. It's really cute. This was made by an artist in the Midwest. It's actually a little ammo can that he turns into wood stoves. They were originally meant for ice fishing shacks. So when they go ice fishing out on their little shacks, they make these to go in it. It gets really hot in here. It actually, we've got to like do the fan and open windows because it gets really warm. Uh, the only thing is that the, the pieces of wood are a little small, so it burns really fast. So you have to just keep stoking it all, all the time. So this is all just easy storage overhead compartment. Some people don't put these in and they feel really open, but I, I definitely storage is such a problem in such a tiny space that I decided to go for the overhead cabinets and just do easy access to storage. And this goes back out to my back stairs and the awning. I like the access from the back too because when you can open up from the back, this becomes your second living room. I'm actually a graphic designer. I went to school for that and I design pins and patches for the national parks. So that's my job. That's why I can do it remotely and do it from anywhere. And so these, I make these pin maps. You can get them on my website. And then you collect the pins of where you go and you put them on the pin maps and then you can hang it on your wall. This was my very first pin that I ever designed. It was the Great Smoky one. That was uh, when I applied for the job, they had me do a pin to see if I could do it. And this was the very first one I ever did. So that's a pretty special one. So I just finished my build. It took me three and a half years. I didn't really do it straight. I took took breaks. It was really overwhelming. So you know, I took my time. But now that she's she's done, she's roadworthy. In two weeks, we're going to Moab, and then after that, we'll see where else we go. I chose the short bus because it just drives around like a truck. It whips in and out of parking spots. You can go through coffee drive-throughs, no big deal, it's great. I've put in about $11,000. That includes $5,000 I paid for the bus. You can probably find them for cheaper than that. I didn't know anything going in. I probably overpaid, but I had no idea. I don't have solar yet, so that'll be probably another couple thousand dollars. I probably spent a lot of money making mistakes. <laughs> you learn a lot as you go. If I ever did another bus, I'd probably save a lot of money just on that. <laughs> At this festival, it's been really good for me because I've been working on this for so long and finally it's ready to show. And so people have just been flabbergasted. They just come in here and they're like, oh my gosh, this feels like a home. This is so cute. I can't believe what you did with such a tiny space. It's been really overwhelmingly positive. A little ego stroke for me. <laughs> I would suggest if you're tackling this project, definitely do your research because it'll save you a lot of time and money in the long run uh, rather than doing it wrong. And then having to do it over again. There's buses all over Pinterest. Instagram was a major, major help. There's lots of forums out there on building buses. Bus Life Adventure was a big one that I used a lot. The people who buy the schoolies and want to do the schoolie project are very creative people. They usually want to do the project themselves. I really like the community that we've built, like becoming a schoolie person. You know, you kind of join this club that you didn't even know existed. And then you meet all these other really cool people that are on the road, very like-minded people. They seek freedom uh, versus like having a mortgage that they're tied to. And so it's a really great community that I've met through this. Hope you enjoyed this video tour. I have a couple other really cool tours coming out that I took at the Tiny House Living Festival. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to get a notification of the next tour.